Well, well, well. Last. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. Always last. Oh. 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 Whatever you say, you're sorry. Sorry. No, <laughs> mean it. <laughs> See, I'm not worthy. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Whatever you're ready. Right. Hello and welcome, my friends. 30 minutes left until the end of our first semester. 25 if the professors are nice to us. <laughs> <laughs> we are Team Seven Wonders, and we are here today to talk to you about Lorna Dune and why DPC should acquire the brand. Our agenda for today: we're going to talk to you. We're going to give you an overview of our acquisition. We're then going to talk to you about Lorna Dune and its place in the cooking industry. From there, we're going to give you our marketing and our organizational recommendations. And then finally, we're going to give you our numbers. First, I'm going to invite Ashley up to talk to you about Lorna Dune and its place in the cooking industry. <coughs> Lorna Dune is Kraft's classic shortbread cookie that was created in 1912 by Nabisco. It's second in the shortbread market and generates $46 million in sales, driven by a small niche of loyal brand followers. Lorna Dune is immaterial to Kraft. It only contributes 0.1% to total revenue and 0.03% to total profit. It is also one of three other shortbread brands owned by Kraft, including new shortbread. Kraft focuses on their other more popular brands, like Oreo and Lou, and acknowledges Lorna Dune as a ghost brand. By rectifying Kraft's neglect and creating a new organization that can exploit opportunities for growth, such as product line extensions and targeted marketing, Lorna Dune sales can be increased, and making them a prime understand the situation that Lorna Dune is in, it's necessary to understand the cookie market. Young or old Americans love cookies. Most purchases are of prepackaged cookies, with the preferred flavor being chocolate at 24%, and then butter cookies, the category Lorna Dune falls in, at 18%. Adults are willing to try new brands and flavors, most notably 20% here who are the most willing at 30%, making them an ideal target demographic. Consumption of cookies is also based more on taste than price or health, with consumers preferring more indulgent cookies. <laughs> Overall, the cookie industry is steadily growing. It's a $5.4 billion industry, which is relatively recession-proof. It's concentrated among the dominant player. The industry is also characterized by seasonality. At the holiday time, there's a peak in sales, which is even more pronounced in the shortbread market. As you can see here, Lorna Dune in the red does not take advantage of this opportunity. Their sales dip at the holiday time. Shortbread makes up 4% of the overall market, or $228 <coughs> in sales women. Lorna Dune mimics this trend, appealing to older consumers as well. We can see this in their distribution pattern. Traditional supermarkets and drugstores are popular with older consumers. Supermarkets make up the largest percentage of Lorna Dune sales, while drugstores have sales that are five times the industry average. In drugstores, they have optimal shelf placement, but in grocery stores, they're placed on the top shelf, out of sight. This is not the case for their competitor, Sandy's or Lou. Sandy's is the number one shortbread brand, while Lou is the only growing shortbread brand, threatening to overtake Lorna Doom. Both target the premium market through their extensive and their price. As we can see here, both Sandy's and Lou are priced above Lorna Doom, which is at the average price per box of $2.52. Lorna Doom has the potential for growth if its problems can be resolved, which Mike will further elaborate on. Through our focus groups and surveys, we have identified that users, that our customers like our The two obvious issues that we have are awareness and availability. Let's hear from two of our customers. I was surprised to find that the cookie was completely delicious and I loved it. It was a tremendous cookie. I wasn't uh, expecting to, to love the cookie, which I did the next time I go to the supermarket. I love Lorna Dunes. I forgot that one. She's not front and center. There, you see a lot more advertising for Oreo. I'm also at the age where, you know, this, this is shrinking the frontal cortex. <laughs> so things don't come to mind as readily as they should. So the first challenge is that more than half of, half of all the consumers don't even know about Lorna Dune brand. The number is even larger in the younger population segment. If you want to think back to the video, Dean is one of the people who represent that group. We can address this issue by web and social media presence, as well as targeted commercial who will build a brand is availability awareness. A lot of people don't know that Lorna Dune is still sold. They don't know where to find it. And the, most of that population target 
is 35 plus, and Georgie from our video represents that group. We think that ads based on nostalgia will bring those customers back to us. Additionally, we will try to improve shelf placement of make it stand out more on the crowded supermarket shelves. When we looked into a package redesign, the main challenge that we faced was to keep the basic look and feel the same while make overall more attractive. We've introduced a few changes. First, we added some background images to give more texture. And we have up updated the, the script on top, and we kept the original logo. The final change is updating of the color of the plate underneath to help it stand out more. This, by far, was the favorite of, of both our focus groups. All our, all our marketing campaigns will have a website. Lorna Dune right now and has never had a website. We are going to fix that. Lorna Dune website will feature information about the product, brand, about our company, our corporate social responsibility, and become the, pop, become the integral part of all our marketing campaigns. Social networks such as Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube are important without consumers. Not only will we be able to talk about our promotions and send them information about new products, but also solicit feedback and react to that. Web presence and social network presence is effective in an inexpensive way to communicate with our users. And now Asad will talk about the details of our marketing. Where are my <laughs> uh, for our campaigns? It's simple, it's effective, and it address directly addresses our two pain points that Mike was just talking about, brand and availability awareness. Um, it also tests very well with our focus groups. Where Are My Dunes is going to be the backbone of both of our campaigns, the Reminder and the Awareness Campaign. The Reminder Campaign, we want to paint 35 to 54 year old women, and it's going to be more traditional in nature. And our Awareness Campaign, we want you to think of Dean, it's going to be tar targeting 25 to 35 year old people, and it's going to be more grassroots and innovative in nature. Um, our Reminder Campaign um, uh, uh, is going to focus on television ads. Why? Because television ads are for all cookie brands. Um, and instead of describing the television ad campaign uh, in detail, we thought we'd show you an example of one. Hang up your coats. Let's go. Where are my dunes? 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 Seriously, did you take my dunes? Seriously, did you take my dunes? You know what? Forget it. <laughs> Where are my dunes? I didn't take your dunes, I swear. Get okay, the dunes? Where's the dunes? Dunes. Where? Oh. Could you go buy some more? <laughs> um, the television ad uh, directly uses the Where Are My Dunes uh, tagline. In it's a, it's, it's a fun type of a commercial. Um, our ads are going to be supported by um, our print ads promotion and pro free sampling to uh, this target demographic. All in all, our reminder campaign is going to cost about $4 million and it's going to give us about 40 million impressions. Um, to talk about the second part of our campaign, the awareness campaign, is uh, Carlos. So for our awareness campaign, we will have two online initiatives. The first one would be a series of four to six 30 second commercials that will focus heavily on the Where Are My Dunes tagline and they will be targeted at our demographic of 25 to 34 year olds because they spend an average of uh, 17 hours a week online. We will feature these videos on Facebook, LornaDune.com and YouTube. The other campaign we have is a 30 second video contest in which we will offer two grand prizes of $10,000 uh, we will choose the first uh, winner and the second one will be chosen based on the amount of clicks. Uh, this will be a very cost-effective way to raise awareness because uh, participants in order to get their videos uh, as many votes as possible. So another initiative we have to differentiate ourselves from our competitors is a uh, uh, Find the Dunes a mobile app game. Uh, the game will feature a person who's running with a Pacolorna Dunes away from a grandmother who's uh, chasing <laughs> increase our sales and our awareness, we will provide product sampling. In our focus groups, we learned that people who had never learned, uh, heard of Lorna Dunes and tried it really enjoyed it. And we will play on this 
And for example, we rem remember our friend Dean from the from the video. He said that the cookies were tremendous. So we planned, we expect this can rate. Also, for the second year, uh, we have different campaigns. Lorna Dune has been around for a long time, but who is Lorna Dune? Uh, the brand has never had a face associated with it. Well, that's going to change when we roll out. You can be the first Lorna Dune contest. Uh, it's going to be uh, nationwide, and then and even family members can uh, nominate their loved ones. Uh, and once we pick the first Lorna Dune, she will be featured in a series of commercials. She will be part of our, some of our uh, corporate social responsibility campaigns, and she will also be on our marketing roadshow that's going to be conducted nationwide. To celebrate is the year where Lorna Dune uh, celebrates his hundredth birthday. So we will develop this special edition uh, box uh, in order to play with this nostalgia that this rich American tradition that Lorna Dune is. This is the beginning of our marketing plan, and to tell you more about it, here's Priyanka. Sales increases during the holiday season. This is more typical to short brands as they have historical association with Christmas. So we want to capitalize on this association and holiday mood of our customers by launching a special edition holiday cookies in December. So we will be launching these cookies and we will be supporting them through POP displays and advertising. And we will get first new <coughs> advantage because our competitors don't have these additions till there. As we know that chocolate is the most preferred cookie segment and it accounts for 24% of the total cookie sales. And even in our survey groups and focus group, we found that people love the taste of Lorna Doom, but a chocolate was So we plan to launch Lorna Doom Select, our shortbread with the chocolate coating on it. And we will launch it first in test market and then we will launch nationwide on success. You can have a look at the prototype of our product. This has been developed by our master chef. <laughs> <You're late. laughs> in later years, we will customers engage with the brand. One such plan is, is to launch Lorna Doon Best Recipe Cookie Contest. Our such, uh, our, these kind of plans will keep our customer engaged with the brand. And then we have enough pull in the market for the product. We will enter into alliances with different businesses like coffee shops, tea shops, etc. And we may also and in later years, we have an ambitious plan of uh, launching a wide range of products in different segments, but all will depend on our market condition at that time. These are our key marketing objectives that we plan to accomplish in later years. From making brand visible in our aim is to make Lorna Doon a household name and part of everybody's life. Then, by coming up with new offerings, we plan to give our customers choices and variety. <coughs> And we know that our competitors will not watch us as mute spectators. So we anticipate aggressive marketing campaigns and new product launch from our competitors. So we have taken care of these market risks in our financial modeling and calculations. But to turn these plans into reality, we need a solid organization to impl implement them effectively. So now Jarlin will talk about our organization. <laughs> As Priyank mentioned, in order to successfully implement our marketing strategies, we need to have a strong organization. And it's produced in a shared facility along with Ritz Crackers. As craft employees tend to be very loyal and to stay at craft for a long time, we anticipate these employees will stay with craft. And thus, we will be hiring all new employees and relocating the factory elsewhere. As we will be creating an organization from scratch, we want to build on craft. One strength that Kraft is notable for is its employee development. And one weakness that we've noticed is that they have become very complacent in regards to brand management, especially for those products that are not as popular as Oreo or Chips Boy. As a result, we have suggested the following culture. One of our employee development programs, the Learn a League Mentoring Program, which will include each employee getting a mentor to offer career development advice as well as the Cookie Rookie Internship Program for college students in which they will be able to have a college internship and develop strong workplace skills. As we from scratch, we will be relocating to Erie, Pennsylvania. And we chose Erie because it's an economically depressed area, but it has a blue, strong blue-collar workforce as well as multiple transportation options and local tax abatements until 2018 which will be very financially beneficial for our company. 
as you can see in the org that organizational structure. And we will be ensuring that all employees have a say in the development of the organization. In addition to providing good jobs in an American city that needs them, we will be implementing a signature CSR campaign, the Moveration Challenge product, but we believe that they have a place in a balanced diet. And thus, our campaign will really emphasize movement and moderation. It will be integrated with our marketing efforts. Our marketing roadshow will have fitness activities such as the shortbread sprint, and we'll also have um, a component on our online website. In the challenge, we'll be able to log their fitness activities and we'll be entered to win one of 100 prize packages. And now to discuss the financial implications of our recommendations, it's Bruce. The value of Lora Dune is $47 million based on Kraft's current strategy. We assume that and Kraft puts limited spending in marketing, product development, and PP&E. Next, we estimate cost of capital. We use for risk free rate, we use 10-year treasury bond as a proxy. For market risk premium, we use arithmetic market risk premium based on S&P 500 in this case for projection purpose. Uh, for beta, we use length share similar uh, risk features. So finally, we plan to offer $43 million to Kraft, which excludes PPNE of $4 million because we don't plan to use Kraft's <coughs> production system. Uh, we set a walkway price of $54 million, which includes 27% premium in the a little bit higher than the industry median of comparable transactions. <coughs> the DTC uh, as you can see to the left hand side, we will have a competitive Lora Uh To the left hand side, you can see our marketing strategy can drive revenues up effectively. Our production system can achieve cost savings and improve that Lora Dune could reach value of $69 million. From profitability point of view, our proposal is expected to drive RE and RA up in the next five years and proving that our plan can benefit the company and the shareholders through better asset use efficiency and profitability. Based on $9 million for Roland Dune, this, uh, this price is based on a set of fixed assumptions. So we may want to know the possible outcomes of Roland Dune's value. Uh, so we use scenario analysis and Monte Carlo simulation to measure the distribution of value creation and the downside risk in our valuation. Uh, to the based on three different cost structure and the revenue forecasts. Even in the downside case, uh, Lorna Doom is still a profitable target for DPC. And for Monte Carlo simulation, uh, we model all risk factors in our valuation, in, such as uh, labor cost, commodity cost, price sensitivity, and the market. The most possible range of value creation of 10 to $18 million. Next is Azar giving some concluding remarks. So what does this all mean? Uh, here are the key points. Kraft neglects Lorna Dune. And you heard from the sound bites that Lorna Dune suffers from a brand availability and awareness problem. We think that we have an effective marketing plan that focuses on the Where's My Dune tagline. We also think that we have an effective organizational plan in place to run a company. That said, as my boy Bruce just said, this will, <laughs> this will create an additional 10 to $18 million worth of value for DPC, which we think will buy you a lot of cookies. Thank you very much. <laughs> and these are cookies for you guys to, to sample our holiday uh, treats. Oh. You should probably wonder what was under it. Carolyn and Ashley. We welcome questions. Go ahead. No, no, no. Um, uh, same question I asked before. How much revenue are they doing now, and 40. what's it going to grow to, and just, just some sense of that? Right now, they're doing forty-six million in revenue. And where, where do you plan on? Where do you, where do you think your plan is going to? This is forty-six million. Thirty-one, thirty-one million dollars for as a manufacturing plan, and we're planning. Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. So, how much revenue is this company doing? So. <coughs> It, 31 million? 31 yes. at the manufacturer's point. Okay. So, and where do you, where is your plan, where are you taking it? We, we are planning on growing um, 
And would, you, would you, if you don't separate them, where's the revenue end up? From, from 31 going to what? Well, it, it was about 2% per year growth, but I don't have on the top of my head the, the total number. I think it, after five years, it's done be at about 34, 35 million. Okay. Yeah, there's hardly any growth. Girl. Stuff you're doing. We are what is the, I mean, <coughs> this is so much to do and then to get nothing. We are in the downtrend right now, and in the last downtrend? Three, yes, in the last three years, if you analyze over three years. No, no, no. Who's in the downtrend? The industry or no? Or the floor in the middle. In order to reverse our downtrend, we need. Where has it been? What? It's it's been year average. Eight percent per year. Yes. So we believe that our effort, your revitalization effort, will stop Just there. Stop, that. stop it and add a little bit of growth. <coughs> What's your uh, revenue projection for perpetually value? Is that a negative to infinity or one? Uh, that is, yes, uh, I mean, it's a little bit lower than our fifth year, 215 projection. Is that close to infinity, the negative growth? Yes. Which means eventually it will have zero revenue? Zero revenue? No. Well, it will never have zero revenue, right? Yeah, it keeps yeah. subtracting 1% of the time, but yes, it will be declining. Uh, if you want to do this, that work is rated right now, what do you think the rating would be? Oh, you mean as a... Right now or after your position? I uh, think the credit rate, credit rate. Yeah. I think maybe BBB, OB. The reason I'm asking, uh, you're using the cost of debt that is yeah. equal to the risk free rate more or less. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we assume that DPC will borrow the debt for Luna Do. I mean, uh, and, and we assume that DPC will have the A plus. So we we see the the length almost about from the length is the cost of debt, and it's about three three point three one. It's a a little bit higher than the risk free rate, and the after tax, and we adjust the debt risk factor. Yeah. We're interested in your organizational structure. You said it's a strong structure. Uh, I have heard of appropriate flexible structure or flat structure, never heard of strong structure. Can you explain what you mean? By creating a company that has relatively few upper managers, that this will create um, a very strong company culture that will then allow us to institute all of these marketing plans. Um, we have a challenge in that we will be a very small company and a company that is dominated mainly by create the strong company culture in order to be able to compete effectively against the larger players in the industry. So it's a strong organizational culture, not a strong structure. I would say it's both a strong structure <laughs> and a strong, strong organizational <laughs> culture. Can I ask the second question? Uh, socially responsible company, and do a lot of things there. Uh, like sports, you know, sponsorship, etc. How is that tied to the direction you want to move for the brand? I would say it's tied to the direction we want to move because we want to be a responsible company and the obesity epidemic has just been taking off in America. And if our product is misused and people eat the whole box at one sitting and don't exercise, that has that's a problem for our company. So by instituting all of these fitness activities, by instituting helpful, just sending out the message that Lorna June cookies are a great addition to your diet, but they should not be the only part of your diet, and you should also <laughs> make sure to exercise. Um, that will really help us to um, have a strong company image and to have a strong consumer base. And in addition, we Social responsibilities is actually being in this economically depressed area where we're generating jobs, which is probably the best good you can do for the community. Do you think the hundred year old, it's almost a hundred years old, do you think that's a positive or a negative? I think it's a positive, especially right now the good old days and I think having this brand with such a, a rich history that you can play off of that there's nostalgia <coughs> about the times where families spent time together and they participated in activities together they had you know dinner on the same table type thing that a lot of people are going back and remembering the good old days so I think we can play off of that but you're targeting it all depends how we take uh, advantage of this 
rich heritage. If we are just mixing it with the novelty, then it's an advantage for us. So it all depends how you take we advantage actually, of this particular fact. We actually have two target groups. We have one target group that's 35 plus, and another one 35 mm -hmm. up and under, and we have two different rationales for them. Is another way to say that it's all the fourth of authentic, and that authenticity, in fact, is that resonates, maybe not that instead of age. So instead of leveraging the yeah. age, you leverage the authenticity. It's, it's true, it's honest, it's the real deal. As opposed to... Uh, yeah, old is not good. <laughs> authentic, <laughs> yes. Old is good. <laughs> 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 and the measure is how much hair you have. <laughs> um, what is the impact of all these cool campaigns? It's raising awareness. I mean, Lord of Dune hasn't had... Okay, sort of so you raise awareness. What is the impact of awareness? So, the, the, the financial... The, from a financial perspective, again, we are, we are changing... We are changing our sales... We are reversing our sales decline and we are starting some growth. And that's what causes that sales reverse. But awareness is high, you said. <coughs> awareness is about 50%. But then also, the, the problem is availability as well. Ah, Some people uh, don't know it's out there. So what is it about this plan that fixes availability? So there are, there are several things that we're doing. One is, well, it's actually available. It's people don't know it's there. Because it's placed up on top shelf. And it's very hard to spot. When I went to the store to pick it up, I spent about five minutes looking for it, and I knew what I was looking for. And and, and so it, it doesn't stand out, and it's on the top shelf. I think if we okay, stop that, right there. What is it about your package redesign that's really all that radical? I'm sorry. And when I saw it, I thought that was just for step one. You almost feel like it was step one that we do for next month. And then the following month, we're going to do a little more. Eventually, we're going to, because we don't want to redesign everything overnight, because at the end of it, it is so incremental that it put me to sleep. And that was... Okay, yeah, because that box in and of itself is not going to pop all that much more than the previous one. Right. But changing the yellow, everyone said, don't do it. And so to us, there were very few large changes we could make without completely departing from its identity. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.